For there are three that bear a record in in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. Now, this is the Johannine comma, right? Yep. However, in the oldest versions of I see where this is going. However, in the old versions of 1 John chapter 5, 7 to 8, it says there are three witness bearers, the spirit and the water and the blood. Now, my question is, why was there a change? Why was this added? Yeah, yeah good uh, question. Well, it, you, know, you, you know, it's, what's, what, no, I just I just wanted to point out that it was funny that he even caught it, right? When he said, oh, in the early manuscripts, right, he even yeah. caught it. Wait a minute. We have a method of dealing with textual variants. We have the early manuscripts, and then if something pops up in a later manuscript, well, we have, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, we can, we have a method of getting to the original, the original reading. But yeah, what, are, what are your thoughts on this, Sam? Yeah, as Lee, you noted it. As far as the Greek manuscripts of First John five are concerned, we don't have ancient copies that contain the verse. We do have some very late manuscripts from the medieval period where this verse is either found in the side or in the main body of the text. So that's why scholars are not comfortable in including it in the modern versions. But that's not a proof of corruption, nor is it the strongest proof, the strongest proof for the Trinity, because I want you to keep two things in mind. Again, number one, because we have such a rich manuscript stream because it's so rich we can identify variant readings and then we can examine the manuscripts and come to reasonable certainty that this was added later now why unless i'm there to ask the scribe and i'm sitting with him and ask we can only guess because the scribe who added it whether intentionally he's not here he's mm-hmm. with god if he's, he's, he's safe. So I can't ask him. What I can tell you is the very fact that Bible translators are honest enough to tell you mm-hmm. that we don't have early Greek attestation for 1 John 5, 7, mm-hmm. and therefore we're not comfortable including it as part of what John wrote by inspiration. That speaks to the honesty of the church. We don't try to hide it. We don't try to ignore it. We tell, hey, this is it. With that said, I want you to keep this in mind. Mm-hmm. The argument that Zachariah and Ahmed Didar are bringing up Here's mm-hmm. what they're trying to do. They're saying, you see, First John 5, 7, if true, proves the Trinity. But we know it's not true. It's a corruption. No Trinity, right? That's the argument. Mm-hmm. But now I'm going to show you the dishonesty and the deception. I want you to pay attention. Because it says there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. These three are one. See, these three are one shows they're one God. But we know John didn't write it. Some corrupt scribe added it. There goes your Trinity. Now, you want to know why they're dishonest? Is it because they just picked one verse amongst all the other ones which actually don't approve of this. They just picked up one one Bible that said this and they're just like, okay, cool. This one thing, while the other correct things, many correct things are behind them. You just say this is right and the other ones are like wrong. Yeah, that's part of it. There's another reason. When they cannot deny that a passage is authentic, I want you to hear this argument. Mm-hmm. When they cannot deny that a passage is authentic, because all the manuscript tradition shows John wrote this or Matthew wrote this, there's no denying it. So what do they do? They then deny it proves the Trinity or deity of Christ. Because I'm going to give you an example to illustrate my point. Mm-hmm. I'm going to read for you John 10, 30, but I'm going to read the context, all right? Mm-hmm. John 10, verse 30, but I'm going to read 27 to 33. Mm-hmm. Now, this one is indisputable. Bart Ehrman, a Atheists will tell you, this is part of John. John wrote this. There is no dispute. All the manuscripts supported all the versions. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give them eternal life. I, Jesus, give them eternal life. They shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, so he's not the Father. He's the Father's Son. He's one with him. Is greater than all. No one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. Now, notice what he's going to say, Ayman. I and my father are one, hen, the same Greek word. Now, Mm -hmm. here's my question. Didat and Naik just said, because 1 John 5, 7 states, the Father and the Word and Holy Holy Spirit are one, that would prove they're one God, but we know John didn't write it, so it's a fake verse, right? Mm -hmm. But wait, Jesus said, I and my father are one. Will they now admit that Jesus claimed to be God because he's one with the Father? No. You know what they're going to tell you? Don't take my word for it. David and I have done videos responding to Didat and Zechariah. They'll say, no, here it means one in purpose, not one God. See the trick? Mm -hmm. When they can't attack the authenticity of the passage, they'll say it doesn't prove he's God. But when a passage they can attack for being inauthentic, see, that would approve the Trinity, but it's fake. Ha ha ha. You see the dishonesty. I get you. I understand. So So but now let me add a final point. You know, in 1 John 5, 7, if you read the context, the context is not about Father and Word and Holy Spirit being one God. It's read the context. The 
Yeah, was- so even if it's authentic, like many believe, mm-hmm. it wouldn't mean they're one God. It means they're one in their witness, not one mm. in their essence. But you know what's ironic? What? John 10.30, Jesus is saying he's one with the Father in essence because notice what he said. I give them eternal life. So, I'm in. can mm-hmm. any creature... Any prophet say, I give all believers eternal life, life that never ends, so they can they, live forever. They can't give it, only God can. But Jesus said, I give them eternal life. No one can take them out of my hand. I'm mm-hmm. all powerful to protect them. And no one can pluck them out of my father's hand. I and my father one. So he's saying, I'm one with my, my father in our ability to make sure no believer ever perishes. No believer is ever destroyed. And I'm one with him and giving them life that never ends. And that's why, and I'll just finish it real quickly. <laughs> in John 10, 31 to 33, it says, at this, they picked up stones to stone him. Jesus said, many fine works I've shown you from the father. For which of these do you stone me? They answered, for a good work we do not stone you, but for blasphemy. And because you, a man, make yourself out to be God. So the verse where he does claim to be God, one with the Father, they they can't say it's inauthentic, because the manuscript tradition shows it is authentic. John wrote it. Jesus said it. They explain it away. So they're being dishonest. Mm, I get you. I get you. Oh, wow. Okay. It's all cool. The idea here is God is one in one way and more than one in another way. And Muslims flip out and object to the idea that God can be one in one way and more than one in another way when, I mean, my goodness, even according to Islam, Allah is one in one way, more than one in another way. They would say that God is one in essence or nature or being, but more than one in attribute. And even in Islam, Allah's attributes can be in conflict with one another, right? You can have, so Muhammad said in the Hadith that Allah says, uh, my mercy triumphs over my wrath. So you've got one, you've got one attribute of Allah, mercy, and you've got another attribute of Allah, his, his wrath or his judgment, and one is actually triumphing over the other. And if you were to say to a Muslim, well, that means there's a division with in Allah and that this means that there's more than one Allah. There's these different parts of Allah that are in conflict and so there must be more than one Allah. Mm-hmm. No Muslim would ever say in a million years, oh yes, I, I guess we believe in multiple gods. Mm-hmm. They understand, wait a minute, the level of attribute, of course we have different attributes, so Allah is more than one when it comes to attribute, but in his essence, in his nature, Allah is just one. They understand They understand that. But then when you say in Christianity where we have this level of attribute as well, we have the level of essence or nature, But there's also this level of person where you have Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And this isn't something that Christians just said one day, you know what, we want a a really fun doctrine of God. This is what God has been revealing to human beings since he created human beings. You can go through the Old Testament, God over and over again started revealing the inner working of his nature. Now, what's amazing, is this is this is a massive blessing, right? God is condescending to tell us about his eternal nature. We should be looking at this going, wow, this is how God has been for all eternity, and he's revealing it to us. Who are we that God would be revealing this to us? And you get to Muslims and they go, oh, that sounds confusing. That's stupid. Why can't God be more mm. simple than that? We want a simple, easy God. Mm. And Ooh, so I get you. I get you. Yeah. So so uh, and, and Sam, you, you can you can expand yeah. more upon this. But yeah, so the the this the central claim of the Trinity is that God is one in essence or nature or being, but more than one in person. And this is connected to uh, why we can read in the letter of John that God is love, right? How can God be love, you know, before he creates? And that's why Allah can't be love. It wouldn't make any sense to say that God is love in Islam, that this is his, this is essential to his nature because Allah couldn't even love until he started creating things. Whereas in Christianity, God can be eternally love because you have a loving relationship between father, son, and spirit within the divine nature. Adam and Eve, they're both Adam in the sense that they're both man, they're both human beings, but Adam is a specific person and Eve is a specific person. They have the same human nature and yet they're individual person. Just to be clear, ladies and gentlemen, we're not saying that this is that this is that God is exactly, yeah. is like this because you know Eve actually came into being after Adam and things like that. Uh, we're saying that it's very it's very interesting that human beings are created in the image of God, and you can kind of get some rough analogy 